Welcome to the Georgia Mountain Fair where we are with a living legend, the beautiful, the young, the vivacious, talented Miss Connie Smith or Mrs. Marty Stewart. I love being able to call you that. Good, me too. I love, I love everything about your relationship. When you stand on stage next to him and you hold his hand, everybody can see that love. I think it's so precious. 17 years. 17 years so far. 17 years opposites attract. Is there an opposite attraction? Are you more alike or are you more opposite? We've got a lot of things we like, but yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're but he, he is much more creative. Mm -hmm. uh, he is much more motivated. Uh, he's much more talented. <laughs> so, no, no, no. But, they're, but, they're, they're, um, but we have a lot of things that we, that we are similar into. Mm -hmm. So we get along great. People ask often about a project with the two of you. Um, maybe composing, singing, doing. Do you ever see the two of you on the road together, just doing shows together? Well, we do shows together every now and then, but, mm -hmm. uh, and then sometimes I'll just take my steel player and go do some shows with his band. Steel player? Yes. Oh my gosh. Amazing. Isn't it? Gary Carter. Oh, Amazing. Right. Yeah. I, it's, it's hard for me to travel without a steel guitar player because yeah. I've just, I just uh, really love the steel. It's a part of my sound and I have, you know, I can sing with a piano or I can sing with just a guitar or whatever, but mm -hmm. I really love the steel guitar. So right. I'm really proud uh, to work with the guys that I have in the band. So that's great. But we, Marty and I do some shows together, both mm -hmm. of us, and then we've done shows where uh, I, I do some and he does some, and then we do some together, and then the band, both bands get on stage and they do something together. So we, uh, I, I just totally love the fabulous superlatives, and he loves They're the sundowners, awesome. yeah. so, so we get along really well. So. You see the color I have on today? It's in honor of the Marty Stewart show. I bet. Because <laughs> I noticed one day, y'all were wearing the teal and the black, yes. and I said, oh, Oh, yes. It works good. Huh? <laughs> I black. asked you put on purple this morning, and I said, no, 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 they're, they're about teal and black. i got to change clothes. But so. they do have some purple ones, too. Oh, yes, yeah. they do. Yeah. We love the Marty Stewart show. We love the idea. I got to see Kitty Wells on there, and I love seeing you stand next to her. Mm -hmm. um, can we talk a little bit about who influenced you and encouraged you? Sure. I, I don't really have any particular influence because uh, sometimes growing up, we couldn't even get country music. We just had to get whatever that would, batteries would pick up mm -hmm. and living sometimes in the mountains and all that. So I, I, I loved, um, you know, I, my favorite country girl singer is Loretta Lynn. Mm -hmm. uh, probably my favorite lady. In, I vote in, for that. <laughs> yeah. my, and my favorite lady in country music was Miss Kitty Wells. Yes, yeah. she was a lady in every sense of the mm -hmm. word and a great artist and a forerunner. And she set it up for us. Absolutely. Her and Jean Shepard, you know, mm -hmm. they did things that had never been done. Right. And so uh, I have to give honor to them all times. But uh, And I have a lot of great girl friends in the, in the country music business. But I always uh, would listen to music and I'd pick things, you know, that I, I mean, I loved Ella Fitzgerald and Sarah mm -hmm. Vaughn and, mm -hmm. and, you know, and Nancy Wilson. I mean, there's so many great, great uh, s singers, you know, and, and I love Brooke Benton and Frank Sinatra and all mm -hmm. that as well as right. country. But the the songs that really um, get my heart's when George Jones sings the Cold Hard Truth wow. or anything. Yes. I mean, he yes. was my favorite male singer, mm -hmm. and, and Ray Price or Merle Haggard. You can't say really who's the best because mm -hmm. they're, they're so unique. And I was fortunate enough to get in a business where there was room for a million, but only one of each. Right. And everybody had their own unique sound to their voice, sound to what they did on stage, and also sound to the band. Mm -hmm. uh, you could hear the first two licks of whatever song it was, and you'd know who was going to start singing because each each artist had their unique sound. And, and it's not that way today. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's different. But back then, I, I did my best not to sound like another girl singer because uh, it just, I mean, there's no one that can... Uh, Sang Kitty Wells songs, but Kitty Wells mm -hmm. and or Loretta's songs, and I mean they were they were just so wonderful. Right today, when they introduced you and they said a voice among no others, there's nobody like you because yours the minute you start, and I will tell you right now, our camera guy has got once a day in his head. <laughs> once you hear that song, it doesn't leave you. Now that was your first release, and it went to number one for eight weeks. Uh -huh. For eight weeks, okay. What was it like to? Get shot out of there, and we'll number we'll one, right how in the world do you keep on doing that? Well, it was it was scary because I was I, I basically wanted 
I wanted to record something. I'd like to. I wanted to hear my song on the radio one time, mm -hmm. and that was my goal. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> yeah, and then once a day hit, and uh, I was from out of nowhere because nobody had heard of me. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the first every year, they used to have a disc jockey convention. Now it's Fan Fest, but it was mm -hmm. it was where all the disc jockeys came in, and they got to meet and interview all the artists. And we did for two or three days. All, all right. we did was interviews and all with the different uh, disc jockeys that played our records on the radio. And uh, they were literally pulling me, you know, one each way. And yeah. but but I remember the very first disc jockey convention was in November, and once a day was number one in the nation. And I was walking down the hall of the hotel where they were carrying on the, the convention, and this guy was walking toward me, and all of I heard him saying, "Lord, Lord, day I knew it. That's how I met George Jones. He was saying the first words out of his mouth. I love it. Uh, it was it was really great. You are addictive, and people who listen to your music, you know, I like everything you do, and I like the idea that you do some upbeat stuff. You don't do all the, now, my lifestyle, I've done that, you ain't coming home and drinking, I've done that, you ain't woman enough, I've lived that life, but I love your upbeat stuff. So, you know, where Loretta's music kind of took us out fighting, you, it's, it's pretty upbeat, and today I love that about your show, and I think the audience did, too. Well, I think every singer really loves a ballad. I mean, mm -hmm. everybody loves to sing a ballad. But I, I do love the upbeat. Mm -hmm. I, and and I, 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 I just had some, the great musicians on my sessions. I mentioned we had just lost a, a month or so ago a Weldon Myrick, who played steel guitar. He worked with Bill Anderson when I first came to town. And Bill's band was on my first record because mm -hmm. Bill wrote my first songs. And uh, so they... Um, they played, and, and Weldon was in such a creative uh, time in his career of just, he, he would work so hard and come up with stuff. And when I wrote that little song, I'll Come Running, uh, I don't know if anybody would have cut it or not. I mean, it was just a fun song, but when Weldon did that, get uh -huh. that steel that thing on it, it made a big difference, and it was, to me, it was like a, Weldon was my dancing partner, you know. Yeah. Uh, the, the musicians in that era, they knew when to play and when to back off and let the, and they knew how to bring you in, they knew mm -hmm. how to step back, and then when it was their turn, they would hit it hard, and then when you start singing, you know, they'd bring you in, but they would step back, and, mm -hmm. and it was, uh, it was, it was a dance, it, it, with Ernest Tubb and the Texas Troubadours, right. or Ray Price and the Cherokee Cowboys, and yeah. they, it was a dance, uh, and I, I really love that, it's what I'm comfortable with, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm, uh, it's like I said on my show, I'd come to my shows if I wasn't on them, because I love, <laughs> I love, that. I, love I hear every lick. Yeah. And I can hum you every lick you know, that's on my records. And, and sometimes I uh, listen for a lick, and if one of the guys don't play it, sometimes it'll throw me because yeah. I'm used to, you know, to that. So I have to, that's what I've said today, it don't pay to think and sing mm -hmm. at the same time. You just got to sing. You got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, one of our favorite things about the Marty Stewart Show is the fact that you include the gospel music. Oh. And today when you close with How Great They Are, nobody does it like you do. It is an incredible, amazing message, and I was sitting in the audience and I was watching people, and they were blown away. I mean, it just absolutely, I think if you hadn't ended with that, there'd been a lot of disappointed people leaving here today. Well, it's, uh, it's my favorite all-time song, mainly for what it says, mm -hmm. because uh, I know some days, and, and I, I was guilty of that this morning, getting up and then taking off running, waking up on the bus and, mm -hmm. and getting busy and, and visiting and doing all that stuff and didn't have any time with the Lord at first. Mm -hmm. And then you you get on stage and you, your mind goes this way and that way and, and, and it's 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 just so good to get your quiet time mm -hmm. with the Lord and get grounded. Mm -hmm. And But if you're not, by the time you get to how great thou art, uh, it lets you know he's mm -hmm. God and you're wow. not. Wow. And, and if we can start out the day that way and reminding ourselves, you know, you need God and you mm -hmm. need his help and mm -hmm. you, you, you need to commune with him. Uh, it's like Christ did. He got with the Father mm -hmm. and he did what the Father wanted him to do. And so it's, uh, um, uh, it was very obvious today that I was scattered because I hadn't done that. Yeah. And uh, he's the one that grounds us because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Mm -hmm. And and we just skip around everywhere, you know. <laughs> now, the other song that you did that was written by a DJ. Yes. I love that song. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, uh, Bill has been a friend of mine for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. And he uh, was a song he wrote. He also wrote songs like Drinking Champagne. Mm -hmm. He wrote Blue 
for Leanne Rhymes. Uh -huh, uh -huh. uh, he's written a, a great, uh, uh, some great, great songs. Uh, and, but he called me one day, and we'd been talking about the Lord, and he came from a wonderful Christian family. Uh -huh. And uh, he, uh, he, so we, anyway, he called me, and he said, I, I wrote this song. And I loved it, and uh -huh. I wanted to record it. And I always felt like that was the cry of Bill's heart at uh -huh. that time. Uh -huh. And I think it's the cry of all of our hearts when we recognize that God's God and we're not. That's it. That's it. <laughs> and it's it's a wonderful song. And I, so I got to record it first. But Bill Monroe recorded that. I think Leanne Rimes has recorded. It. There's a bunch of people that have recorded that song uh, since since uh, Bill first wrote it. Now, a mom, an artist, a wife. You travel a lot. I don't travel as much as I used to. I sometimes when I'm not working uh, on the road, I may go with Marty and mm -hmm. uh, that I'm just going with him. But uh, and he'll say no, no, you're off today, and then he'll still wind up calling me out. But, yeah. <laughs> but uh, we have so much fun, you know. If I haven't seen him enough and I'm off and he's he's working, I go with him, you mm -hmm. know, because we're gonna make sure we're not apart very long because right. it's just not as fun. You know? Seventeen <laughs> years. Yeah. Describe. And we dated about three and a half years. Okay, so 20 years, the love of your life, and you were obviously the love of his life. And I love, I, I just love the way you connect. The way you connect, you can tell it's the real deal. That's and um, that is so important because so many couples stray and, you know, he's traveling, they're traveling. And you put an emphasis on that marriage, didn't you? Yeah, I, I I've always tried to do that. I failed before, mm -hmm. uh, but I, um, with Marty and I, it's uh, we're both committed mm -hmm. to each other as well as love each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, he gets very busy, and he is totally dedicated to his work. But he makes time for me, mm -hmm. and uh, and I've got. Uh, you know, as I said, five kids, and I made him an instant grandpa. You know? <laughs> Don't you love it? <laughs> and, uh, and, um, and I ate grandbabies, and, uh -huh. uh, and he's, uh, you know, he loves, he loves all them. And he, he, t uh, my son Kerry, that's with me today. Uh -huh. He came in from Taiwan. He'd been over there for 17 years. And, that is amazing and, to me. 17 years away. Well, you ever come back? Oh yeah, okay. oh yeah. Okay. Come back. But Marty says when he grows up, he wants to be like Kerry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got you. Because he you. just really admires and respects my yeah. boys and my girls. So, yes, and they do him, so it works good. Any talent in your children? Do your oh, children? Yeah. Okay, are they involved in music? Well, I um, I've got my oldest son uh, who was in Amsterdam as a missionary, been overseas since '84. Uh -huh. He went over there as, as a musician, missions. Oh, shoot, uh, musicians. How does it go? It's uh, a missionary. Why went? Why went? But it was. Uh, the musician side of it, okay. rather than just uh, just the missionary. He was mm -hmm. he was in in uh, involved in gospel music over yeah. there. Well, what he did, he was in he was a missionary, but they would like set up the band on the street, mm -hmm. and he was bring right, people in. Mm -hmm. it, it, his, their their office in Amsterdam, they had a pornographic shop on one side. Wow. And uh, and then they had a uh, prostitution house on the other mm -hmm. side. And but gospel he, music in the middle. Yeah, uh, and, and gospel ministry. Uh -huh. And but they used their music. They would set up on the street, and uh -huh. as people come, they could minister to right. to them. And so he did that. And then uh, he he also married an, uh, an a, a Norwegian girl, and their child they had three children. So he and I bet they're beautiful. Oh, I they bet they're very beautiful. gorgeous. Yes, yeah. they are. Yeah. And but my uh, my my son now is a clinical psychologist. In Amsterdam, or in in Norway, in, wow. in Oslo, Norway. So, uh, so he's he's lived over there all those years. But I go back and forth, and they come uh -huh, back and forth, uh -huh. and so we see each other, but not enough. But, yeah. but but we see each other. But and then I've got three daughters uh, that live in Nashville, so uh -huh. I see them. All. Do they write? Do they sing? Are they involved? My in youngest daughter has done quite a bit of singing, but she got married a few years ago, and she's got a five-year-old, a four-year-old, and a two-year-old. She can only rock the babies yeah. and sing. But she, <laughs> she was a librarian at one of the schools there okay. close to Nashville, and uh, uh, as the kids go back to school, they're, they're right in a subdivision right around there that she'll probably go back to mm -hmm. work some when the, when the kids are in school, but right now she's plenty full-time mom. <laughs> right. Let's talk a little bit about the program because the vision of doing the Marty Stewart show um, hit or miss in television because you, he took a, a risk. He was coming off the road to devote some time to TV. It's worked well. I know a lot of people who never missed that program and even hit that DVR to record it. So it's really, really done well, hadn't it? 
Uh, we've been number one on that network since we started, mm -hmm. and we've been there six years. Yeah. So uh, we never miss it. Oh, never miss it. I mean, it's really and it's encouraging. Well, it's it, encouraging. It, he usually does it. We tape him in the winter, 26 shows mm -hmm. in the winter, when most people are off the road. Mm -hmm. So he's on the road all summer, and then we tape, all, you know, in the winter time. Mm -hmm. And uh, but it's so much fun with the people that we work with, with Eddie Stubbs being the announcer that mm -hmm. works. He's the awesome. for WSM. Yeah. yeah. And then Leroy Troy, who plays the banjo, who's on every week, and then Marty's band, the fabulous mm -hmm. superlatives, his sound guy, um, you know, and his road manager. Uh, Philip Clark and Mick Connolly are both involved in the show, mm -hmm. and uh, so we uh, and then uh, we've we've been very important to us because Marty's mission, like mine, is keeping the original country music alive. Exactly. And uh, and so he, he we brought in so many. Mm -hmm. I mean, this past year we had Melvin Montgomery on, we had Freddie Hart on, of course we had Stonewall Jackson. I'm gonna tell you, we missed Freddie Hart, and I'm pouting. I'm pouting. I didn't know we were gonna miss it, but. We hit DVR, and it seems like somebody at the house hit the unrecord, and so they got in trouble. So you got to do that again. we got to see that again. Well, actually, you know, <laughs> we're on three. three. It's on also Rural TV, and it's also on Family Net. We'll find it. <laughs> so we'll they, they replay them over and over because we still hear about the first ones we did, the first mm -hmm. year. I mean, our first guest was Jimmy Dickens. Mm -hmm. Our next guest was Earl Scruggs. You wow. know, so we started that, and we've kept it that way. Um, and uh, I think uh, Kitty's last performance was on our program. It was amazing. And it, yeah. it was amazing because we it did that amazing. to honor her and, yeah. uh, and um, uh, Johnny time. and Jack. And she was 90 at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we did all her songs and Du Bois did some Johnny and Jack songs. And uh, Marty said, well, we want to do the national anthem of country music. And Connie's going to sing, It Wasn't God Who Made Honky Tonk mm -hmm. Angels. So he said, and I want, yeah, when we were rehearsing, he said, I want Kitty to come up and stand beside you. And I said, Honey. You know, because I was worried that, yeah. that it would be good for her to just stand, right? You know, that long, and she was strong. But uh, but I just that's why I kind of kept my arm around her just in case I felt her weak or yeah. anything. Yeah. And and but when I started singing, she was kind of mouthing the words, and and then she started singing real quiet, wow. and she got louder and louder, and it got toward the last course, and I thought. She wants to sing. She does. And that's when I handed her the mic and she sang the whole last course. And I, it was hard for me not to fall it apart. Was uh, it, was it was incredible. It was incredible. It was incredible. I was so proud. And We've she watched that over and over because we recorded it. Yeah. We have watched well, it. It just about over. makes me cry to talk about it because yeah. Yeah. such a, I mean, one of my greatest treasures is, is a uh, cookbook she signed. Mm -hmm. And I brought you a cookbook today, too. Oh, that's great. Let me let me ask you something about, um, I love that Marty talks about Mississippi. Now, who actually sponsors the Marty Stewart Show? Is Mississippi, Mississippi involved in that? Mississippi I think that is, is so cool that they sponsored. do that. Well, yeah. Marty believes in Mississippi and has always promoted Mississippi because uh -huh. he was born there. Uh -huh. And he knows of all of the folks. I mean, there's so many artists. I mean, from Faith Hill to, you know, right. of course, Jimmy Rogers to Elvis Presley to uh -huh. Charlie Pride. You know, there's just so many great writers, songwriters. Uh, uh, you know, musicians of all kinds, but there's so much, so much music. There's great, I mean, Faulkner is from Mississippi, you know, Eudora Welty, uh, great photographer is mm -hmm. from Mississippi. There's just so many, much talent, and so many actors and actresses right. from Mississippi. Uh, so Marty's so proud of that, so he's always promoted them, mm -hmm. and they want to promote. You know, him, I love that. And they, I love they, it. Yeah, now, great. where do you call home now? Where do you and Marty live? We live outside of Nashville. Okay. And, Town called Hensonville, right next door. Johnny Cash lived. Mm -hmm. Well, I went up there and spent a couple of days um, with Donna Fargo, and um, you know, when you look at the people who, like you, are still on the road, still doing what you're doing, and um, love what you're doing because of her health, she had to come off the road and she started writing, and she writes inspirational things, and I think that's one of the things about you. You bring the inspiration into your show. And it's so important that everybody does that because none of us would get through the day without a little inspiration from God. And I think that is so important in whatever you're doing. You know, if you don't include Him, then pretty soon things start kind of falling apart, don't they? Well, yeah, when we try to be our own God, it just mm -hmm. doesn't work. Doesn't work. Not, yeah. and, and most country music people, are they actually started out like singing at mm -hmm. church. Mm -hmm. They were, most of them, raised in the church environment. And so... Uh, it's in their background, and everybody in country music before they're done, they want to do a gospel album for their mama. You know, mm -hmm. absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So, but uh, I became a Christian in 1968. Uh, she was pregnant with my son Carrie, mm -hmm. and uh, um, so it's it, it's 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 been a lifesaver for me. Mm -hmm. And he keeps 
drawing me back. And, yeah. and I, I keep needing to go back and recognize where I came from and who, who, who is the master. He brings life. us through the impossible days, doesn't he? He does. He, you know, there's a day that you think, I can't handle this and I'm never going to, and then all of a sudden, it's done. You it's go, done. go to his word and he says, yeah. as thy day, mm -hmm. so shall thy strength be. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's, that's it. Awesome. Well, you're doing another show tonight, and I hope that people will come out um, and see this second time around. Because the first time around, you know, they're kind of watching and listening. The next time, they know what they're looking for because they know they're going to hear that and how right they are. When you share the word that you did today, there will be people who leave here and say, go pick up her gospel album. What's on your table for sale? Because I didn't even get to look. Do you have some gospel CDs here we've, today? We've got, a, we've got one gospel CD here. A lot of my records, the only way you can get them is like I've got a couple of box sets out mm -hmm. uh, that RCA put out, but most of my records are not on CD, you know, because okay. I had 53 albums, but until these two box sets came out, they weren't available on CD, so you can get most of, of everything I did on RCA for nine years, mm -hmm. and we did, used to do th uh, three albums a year and a single every three months, you know, back wow. then, so, wow. so there was a lot of CDs there, a lot of records and songs, but I've got songs on Columbia and songs on uh, uh, monuments, some of those that have never been on CD yet, mm -hmm. so that, that may happen at some point. But we've got uh, the newest record. Marty's produced two records on me since we've been together. Mm -hmm. It was like 13 years before he talked me into doing another one, but I did a couple of years ago. And we've got that one, and then a lot okay. of the songs I sang today, today. was on that. Okay. And, uh, and then I always have to sing. Uh, as Mr. Roycek I've said, sing the song that brought you here. I have to sing some of those songs that that uh, people requested. And before right. I did the show today, we were had a request for one that we added to the show. And uh -huh. So it's uh, it's apt. I've had so many songs I can't sing them all, but uh -huh. uh, we have a show limit that we do, you know, for right. our promoter. But um, we do quite a few of them, and we'll do some different songs tonight, and some same, some that uh -huh. we just about get so many requests. If we don't, you know, we want to. We try to set up the show according to what we think the people want to hear. When you're at home, are you just Mrs. Marty Stewart? Do you cook? Do you clean? Do you do all the things normal housewives do? Do you have a normal life? Is there a part of your life that's what we would call normal? Well, I suppose so. I we go we go fast, so there's I don't know if there's how much normal there's biscuits about, and gravy at your house. Me Marty, uh, I'm a, I'm a beans and taters kind of person. <laughs> I got you. I got but, you. But, yeah, I'm not a, I, I, I cook, but I'm not a fancy cook. Mm -hmm. I just I cook. Well, I'm going to give you a cookbook because I did a TV show in Atlanta for five years, and I had a, a saying, it's got to be simple, southern, and scrumptious. Yeah. And it has to be simple, southern, and scrumptious because I had, at that time, four jobs. And I did not have time for any of that complicated junk. Yeah. So I made simple, simple recipes, and I want to share this with you. And in here is Freddie's cornbread. That's Freddie. Freddie brought this cornbread Thanks, to me, and I'm like, you do what with that? And if you like cracklings, this is cracklings that don't hurt your teeth because you <laughs> use little fat rinds, you know, the little bags of the pork skin right, yeah. that you have in the store. You walk in, you pick up a bag. And I said, you do what with that stuff? And I made this cornbread, and it's like our number one recipe now. So oh, it's in the great. cookbook. But simple, southern, and scrumptious, and keeping your life in order. This also has a... Um, because I work with battered and abused women, there's a tribute to all battered and abused women in here, and I want you to kind of pick that up and spend a little time when you're on the road reading a little bit about why we do what we do. When I started in television, it was to give back. And I learned quickly that each each of us has something that we can give back every single day, whether a kind word or just a gesture, something you do nice to people. And I will tell you, we've got a sign I'm putting up today for a friend that says, you ain't from around here, are you? Because some people don't understand kindness. But if you give that little kindness every day, it comes back to you 10,000 times. Well, uh, life sometimes gets uh, gets to feel like a big wall that you can't get through and you, mm -hmm. and you can't get around. But it, it, when I feel like God has spoken to my heart, I'll give you enough love to overflow the walls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and he'll do that. I know, yeah. I know matter of fact, uh, I, Bill Anderson asked me a question. He was interviewing me after I'd quit the business for several years when right. my children were young. And he, uh, I mean, they, they, people thought I quit to go gospel music, but I never was a gospel singer, mm -hmm. but I do sing a lot of uh, gospel uh, hymns is what I right. grew up calling right. it, but uh, I quit because I couldn't give up my 
family, uh -huh. and I couldn't give up my Christianity. Uh -huh. uh, and but I could, I I could give up, you know, singing uh -huh. uh, just because I loved it. I didn't have to do it. Right. And uh, uh, so I, that's why I quit for a while to be with my kids and my family. Uh -huh. And uh, there just wasn't enough of me to go around at that right. time. And then when they started back to school, I had to go back to work to help feed them. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. so that it, it was just it was just simple economics, you know. Yeah. But um, but anyway, I when I came back to the business, uh, Bill did an interview and he said, "Isn't it harder to be on stage as a Christian as it was than it was before?" And I said, "Well, no, really, it's easier." Uh -huh. Before you go out there and you're wondering and worried that if you don't do everything just right, they won't love you. Mm -hmm. And but as a Christian, you just got there and love them. Mm -hmm. It's okay that's either it. way. That's it. <laughs> that is so true. And and that's one of the things I started at a Christian station in Atlanta, WATC, and then I went to GGS up in Greenville, and it was all Christian. And and that worked. It just worked because these amazing people started calling, writing, texting, sending you these inspirational messages. And a year ago, my daughter passed away. And um, when she did, had I not had the Christian, the love of all our viewers, I would never have made it. And we all know that there's something in somebody that can turn my life around, your life around, everybody's life around. You just have to give that little bit. And it's so important to, and as a Christian, that's what we do. You know, we give to somebody else, and it comes back to us. It always well, comes back to us. That's God's call. He wants us to be one. Absolutely. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I am so in awe of you. I've loved your music forever, but I love you as a lady because you are you are what needs to be standing on stage everywhere in America today. We don't need all the junk. You know, we need that good, positive message that you deliver. And you come back and you give Marty, I want you to give him this. Oh, okay. I want you to tell him <laughs> the, the tail and back. <laughs> I'll tell him for sure. We love everything that you've done together, and I love that you do inspire people to be the best that they can possibly be. And well, I'm uh, still working on that. I got a yeah. long way to go. <laughs> well, and to son Carrie, thank you for yes. being here today. This was this was so cool. And there's your cookbook. I love you. Yeah. Are we done now? Time to say goodbye where rivers, mountains, and good friends meet. We are leaving Miss Connie Smith. She's going to do another show tonight. I hope you will catch her, and I hope you'll spend a little money, spend a little time getting to know this wonderful lady. Do you have a website? Well, yeah, uh, but uh, most of my stuff, if they want to order anything, because uh, I don't have actually have the website. It's done by a record company, so mm -hmm. I, I don't even know how to get to it. To okay. But Come to my, a show uh, and buy our but, stuff. But Marty Stewart Tours uh, and Marty Stewart Store, you know, mm -hmm. you can get there anything go. I've got there on there. There you go. And tune in to RFD and do not miss the Marty Stewart Show. If you do, I'm coming after you. And don't let anybody at your house undo the DVR when you want to record the show. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs>